Hi, I'm Tom Atkinson. I'm the GBC coordinator, and we're here at Brick Fair New England. And I'm going to walk you through uh, all the modules we have out today uh, and maybe try to give a little description of how some of them work. We'll start right here with this bridge, and we'll, come, we'll end with the bridge, too. So we'll start with the balls rolling across the bridge. Um, the first module we come to is a pneumatic module. Uh, this is run by uh, compressed, a, a little compressor piece. And everything else in the whole module uh, is run on compressed air. And it's a series of pneumatic uh, cylinders and uh, switches. And this, some of the switches actually, I mean, some of the cylinders move things and some of them just move switches. Uh, it runs around in a loop. This also module is also a little bit leaky, and you can see there's a lot of balls kind of filter through there, but we don't worry about that. Yeah. Uh, the this next module is a series of little little poppers, um, and and it's each one of the, if you can see inside there, each one of those red things is spring-loaded and is on a cam. A cam comes around and pops each one up. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next one. So from here, after popping up three or four times, and then it goes down a, a path and squiggly and off to the next module. This next module is a, is a bit of a, a slow pusher, geared down. Um, it handles small batches uh, and uh, has, has turned out to be a pretty reliable module just because I think it's a slow push. Uh, from there, the balls get pushed into the Ferris wheel, and this has become a, a fan favorite. Uh, I think mostly just because of the size. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool when you first walk up to it, see all of them sitting there on the each ball sitting there as it moves around slowly. Yeah, and uh, this is this is one of my uh, favorite modules, I guess I have to say, uh, because uh, it's it's on its second GBC iteration. I've always been a fan of Ferris wheels. Um, so, and, and over the years, it's become a fairly reliable module. So, I really like that. Um, after the Ferris wheel, there is a, a Philo module. This is one of his modules that he designed with his batch of seven or so back almost ten years ago now. Uh, and from there, we go to... Uh, a, a train module that is basically two separate entities that are connected with track, and that makes it adjustable so we can compensate for however many modules are here. Uh, or sometimes if we have some modules that we expect are going to be problems, we'll put it next to the train so we can always pull it out and slide the train over and make it a little longer. Um, this this train module has been around for a number of years. It's gone through several improvements, but it's still not quite there yet. You're still working on it. Yeah, the uh, the unloader side, the the loader side got rebuilt because it used to be a problem. The unloader side now needs some work. Uh, um, okay, so one of the things I did when I rebuilt this, uh, I'll tell you about. Originally, it was done with the older nine volt motors, and uh, I used a a particular method of sensing how much had how much rotation I was using a light sensor and that was subject to some some problems so now I'm, I'm using power function motors a lot easier to replace when they fail a lot cheaper to replace when they fail and it uses a rotation sensor to measure a, a certain quantity of balls or rotations uh, so it doesn't get too many balls but you know some minimal amount so once the balls are on the train you go around the corner, and over here to the unload module, and I see you got a jam up here. That does happen. Um, so the, that this is one of the problems with the unload module is that balls do find a way to, to lock. <laughs> they will always to do that. Even though they're being bounced around, they still find a way to stop moving. Um, from there, it dumps into this small sweeper module, that sweeping little steps at a time. And this, this module used to work great, uh, even with a big load of balls in it. But for whatever reason, at this show, it hasn't liked a lot of balls in it. So it's been finding a way to jam. Always fun new problems popping up, you know. <laughs> it's amazing. You think you got something working very well consistently, and then 
something changes, something wears in, wears out, and it will start failing. In some cases, it, it works. It actually goes the other way. I have a module that fails and fails and fails. All of a sudden, it starts working perfectly. So you just things change. It is plastic, after all. So this is a, uh, a an example of uh, another Philo module um, using a flex piece to as a um, a screw, Archimedes screw, to bring the balls up. Of course, you're not getting any balls right now, but there you go. You can see what it does now. A little manual help. Um, from there, we go on to uh, what I call my up and down module, which uses, and this is something you may want to take a, a close look at. Um, it's a mechanical toggle that is toggling an electric switch. So as the, as the thing comes up, it pushes the toggle past the point of dead center to the point where it will flip the switch all the way over. Uh, because these switches do have a you know one direction and then a, an off spot in the middle and then an other direction. So you have to push it past that. Uh, this is one of the things. The, 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 this, this part of this module, I think this is its fourth iteration, and it's finally reliable. Um, it still has other problems down here sometimes, pieces come off, but this module used to give me a lot of a hassle, and now it's working pretty well. Move on. Uh, this is my counter that uses two NXTs. Uh, this, this module's been working pretty well uh, in terms of passing balls on, but it does have this bug where it occasionally forgets to rotate the m most significant digit. And it's particularly bad when you get a whole crowd around, oh, it's 9,999, and it goes over to zero. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I will fix that. I spent some time trying to figure it out, but I didn't get to the bottom of it. Um, and what, once we get out of this module, we go on to um, one that is basically a, a set of the newer tread links inverted, uh, snapped together in a circle, uh, inside out. Uh, this particular module uh, is capable of handling a, a huge batch of balls. Uh, completely an accident that it was able to do that. But dump a bunch in there, see what it does. I, I've thrown a hundred balls in there and it handled it without problem. I mean, the spec says you're supposed to be able to handle 30. Um, but I have thrown in a hundred and no jams, no anything, which is just awesome. If only every module could handle that. Uh, once we get out of that, we go on to uh, my, my shooter module, which is my personal oldest module. It's 10 years old now. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it is one that I, has frustrated me over the years, and I've wanted to take it apart and just be done with it, but it's such a popular module, and people just love the fact that the ball is shooting up. So, I can't. I just, you know, I have to just keep trying to improve it. Um, and it has gotten a lot better. The first time I ran this, it could not go five minutes without breaking. So, uh, definitely vast improvement. Uh, after this module, and if the balls wind all the way to ground, we come to a module that has, it's based on uh, a couple of square gears and a brick-built uh, conveyor chain. Um, and I've promised the people that it help out with this that I will take this module apart now because it leaks. It leaks a lot. And it's because I, I observed that I when I first put the input bin on this, um, I observed that, oh, geez, it's bumping the conveyor. And then I realized oh, I could take advantage of that and use that as a a little bump to keep the balls from finding a way to jam. It, however, it's too bumpy, and it bumps the balls right out of the module. So, let's move on to the next one. Then we go into a, a conveyor that has a, an adjustable ramp. We use this to kind of, very easy to snap pieces on and off, to use this as kind of a an adjustable filler module, I guess. And, and again, this is another, feeding another module that is designed to be adjustable, uh, go around corners, so on and so forth. Um, from there we go into, 
Oh, wait, we're running out of balls. I don't know why we have to Refill, but <laughs> get a refill here, see, see if we can find some more. <laughs> a couple modules where they get stuck a lot, so you gotta keep them moving down the line. <laughs> yeah. I just asked for a little help. So this this particular module will load up a certain number of balls until this this thing gets full enough that the the, the weight on top of it will make it dump out, kind of like a water park thing with a big, big just, barrel bucket of water that dumps okay. Yeah, so that's uh, that's always fun. Um, I don't know. Want to wait until we get a full thing? Let's keep moving on. <laughs> they will come. Here we go to a conveyor system that just brings it up and this is actually kind of neat when uh, this is full of balls I'm gonna cheat a little so you get a bunch of balls see what's going on here when this is full of balls and they're all going zigzagging back and forth it's, it's kind of fun it's a visually neat very simple I mean there's not mechanically there's nothing that complicated here other than the conveyor uh, but it's still a visually a cool thing so. Once it zigzag back and forth, then we come to this wheel, um, which is a, a Technic built wheel. The, the balls fit right into the holes and they're rotated up and then fall out the other side. Uh, from there we go to, um, this is a inspired by an Akiyuki module design that uh, picks up the balls and, it, and it's a little tricky to understand what, what's actually going on here, but the three prongs of each one of these hands is just tight enough to slip onto a ball and pick it up. And then when it reaches the top, this arm here opens up the three fingers and that drops it up there. So from there, this drops it into uh, the input of a large module that allows us to not have to crawl under tables. Which is a good thing. This is the not crawling under the table module. That's what this is for. Yes, that. Yes, I'm getting too old to crawl under tables, especially after chasing balls all. Um, and from here, he instead of finding a nice, gentle way to get the balls back down, bam, <laughs> they come flying back down. Um, and I'm amazed that this doesn't have more problems of just being beat on so much that things start falling off it. I haven't seen that happen, but. I suspect it probably does over time. Uh, from there we go to uh, a, what looks to be a little complicated of a thing, and if you observe this for a while, you can see that uh, it kind of self-regulates. It will fill up to a certain point and then start circulating around so that you get a certain amount of balls here to feed this robotic arm, which comes over and, and wants to get a, a cup full. And you can see that when it's pushing down to allow balls to flow into it, it's blocking the back of the path from getting too many balls. Uh, it's a pretty nifty mechanical yeah, thing. So they can't all pour in at one set. That's right. Yeah. You only get. You don't want too many balls. So you can see it'll block it right here. Pretty clever. Um, from there, the once this just dumps it into this uh, this big rectangular thing that's just kind of filters the balls down and in a way to use up that energy and then we go on to a, a very slow tipping module um, which gravity is doing the work here most of the time uh, and, it, and this is very slow but and handles small batches of balls from there we go into a module that um, is a series of these motorcycle wheels uh, and it slowly rotates them up from one to the next to the next. And with a, what's really neat about this is this is something he just vastly improved upon was the mechanism to feed the balls in. Because this, this type of mechanism with the motorcycle wheels can really only handle one ball at a time. It can, you give it two and it'll find a way to jam. So the, the uh, mechanism here that allows one at a time through um, the thing that's really clever about this is he used an inverted slope here to kind of stir things up so that it, will, it can find a pattern to jam, but if there's three balls there, it will push them on. It will, find, it will break that jam up. Uh, it's very clever, very clever. So once we come out of this, we go in to, a, to a series of three small modules that are basically 
uh, just pushing things up, rolling on to the next module, um, and then they feed into this uh, new module that's a train, a new train system that has an NXT on the train and an NXT at the station. Um, and he's using the, it's a completely touchless system. It's using color sensors to look at these uh, basically signals system. He sees the yellow and it says, oh, that means I'm getting close to the station, slow down. And then when he sees the red, it knows he's fine. Just, just like in real life. <laughs> That's right. That's why he chose those colors, I think. Um, and then the, the in, so the intelligence he, here is running the train back and forth, knowing when to start and stop. And then there's a signaling mechanism, or the train, the station knows the train is there, dumps some balls on, and done, and then signals the train, okay, I'm done loading you, and then the train takes off. And the train is clever enough to, to unload itself at the other end. There's no intelligence at the other end except on the train. And you can see, it uses different colors at this end. Green meaning slow down again, and blue meaning, oh, you've hit that station. And it's being weird. Trying to figure it out. It was working so good. <laughs> Where'd Stuart go? Man, I was just bragging how cool this thing is. It may be the battery. I don't know. Um, anyway, so once the train dumps the balls here, it, it steps it up to get it back to our standard module input height into a little, a tiny little box module that then dumps into this module here, and actually it's about to go. So, there you go. <laughs> Good timing. Um, so this, this module, because of the vast quantity of balls, uh, if you notice when it dumped, it sent half of them back again. That's because it's too many balls at once. And even still, sending half of them forward is still more than the spec. So he has a, a special module that uh, can handle 100 balls or whatever and then dole them out nice and slowly. So it moves really slowly there so they aren't going through too fast. Right, because it's very easy to overwhelm the module after you if you exceed the spec. Um, so... Because of the way that works out and how picky I am about defining a module, I have to call the whole thing one module because this doesn't meet the standard. It puts out too many. So he made a special one so that the two of them together, that meets the standard. Uh, how we get away with these things, I don't know. Um, from there we go to a simple conveyor that just feeds a long ramp. Um, you get to see the balls roll for a long time, which is always fun. And then you get around the corner and it feeds a module that is uh, a series of flippers. So it, it moves it up a couple of bricks height five times, which is plenty high. Um, and then we, and that, after the balls get flipped five times up to that, it goes into a small Ferris wheel module. Um, and this is interesting in how it scoops the balls up. And, uh, and once it has them scooped up, once it gets to a certain point on the top, it flips over and the uh, or the balls roll out, and then it flips around, ready to scoop the balls up again. So there we go to this uh, module that is made up of a conveyor and a wheel, and a water wheel kind of a wheel. And if you observe at the top here, once the balls come up the conveyor, there's a split, and they can go either direction here. If they go this way, they go back around the wheel, down the wheel and around again. And if they go on this side, then they slide down this and on to the next module. And here we go to this um, beautifully constructed uh, conveyor belt made out of Technic pieces and effectively a three-tooth gear driving it. Uh, it is, I, I love this module. It's cool. Fortunately slash unfortunately, all, the rest of the mechanics and the drive are all inside, which is kind of neat until something goes wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you got to take it all apart. Yeah. Yes, and uh, that has happened a couple times. But 
And once we leave that module, we go on to uh, a module that uh, breaks things up into five rows or four rows, nice and slow, and then it combines those rows back together again and into something that feeds at one ball per second. And then the last part of this module is a, another brick-built uh, conveyor running on square sprockets, which is definitely a little unusual. Um, from there we go into, uh, oh look, this is the Brick World um, workshop build module from last year. Um, we have one of these, and then from there we go into this very colorful conveyor with two spirals to get the bricks back down. If the, the balls come up on two sides, and the ones that come up on this side will come down and recirculate. And the ones that come down here will will go down it into the output and out to the next module. Um, this is one of the modules that, one of many modules we have here that can be set to recirculate completely. So if you flip this lever over here, all the balls will go back. And you can just fill this with balls and let it run on its own. So what is the advantage of that? What would be the reason that you would build that into the module? Well, there's two reasons. One, it, you can have it as a standalone display. Uh, number two, there's been plenty of times when we have a module break and it's something that can be fixed relatively quickly. So if we set, if we have a module prior to it that can recirculate, uh, we can set it to that and it will keep the balls from flowing into something we're trying to repairing, but not b shut down the whole line. Uh, so that having a recirculate that you can flip on for 30 seconds or a minute is, is a very useful thing. And uh, I've tried to incorporate it in a number of my modules. So after this one, we go into... This is another module that was based on a Philo design. Um, it's a big rotating flipper. And there we go to another small up and down module. This is kind of a minimalist module, as small as you can get it. <laughs> This is the size of the input bin. From there we go into, and I, I still claim that this is a prototype. You can tell by the color scheme. Um, I'm still hoping to get the input bin a little more bugs worked out because I really like this style of agitating the balls. Um, and then it gets fed one at a time into the, the, the little hammer, popper, whatever you want to call it, somersault. I don't know, whatever. Um, the interesting thing about this is it's still a prototype, so things are not, the gears are not necessarily meshing. Things get out of whack or jam and slip, and the timing of dropping the ball in, you have to drop it in and give it time to settle before you pop it up. If you wait too late, then the ball will get stuck underneath. And if you go too early, or go, yeah, if you go too early, it'll get stuck underneath. If you go too late, the ball will still be wiggling around when it tries to pop up, and it will go flying in odd directions. So um, it, it, the timing is kind of critical. Uh, and it's speed dependent. If I slow it down, it probably start missing. <laughs> so that's something else I'd try to kind of try to figure out before I completely rebuild this into a new module. Uh, this is... After that, we go on to my, um, I, I, I warn people that this is mesmerizing if you look at it for too long. A lot of people want to know how this is done, and actually, I'm going to, holy cow, I've never seen that before. I'm going to stop this and show people something. The Really, the critical, the critical part of this module is two things. One, you have to realize that these are all floating on an axle, and that there's a little bit of tension twisting them all together. And the very bottom one is one of the old coat hanger pieces. And that's what starts it, because it has an axle hole. And all the rest of these just have holes that float on the, the axle all the way up to the very last one, last thing on there, which is a, a, a two long half beam with axle hole. So two axle holes on the end, everything else is just a, a, a through hole. And it's all just tension that holds the whole thing together. You know, I know that's something that people have been curious how it works, so maybe that will help. Uh, this is also another b module that can be set to recirculate. A, a quick flip here, and then the balls go back around. So, very helpful to have. From there, we go to a, a module that's uh, just basically a, a platform in the middle that goes up and down. 
uh, and the, the, the input and output ramps just kind of float along with it. And when the platform's down, the input ramp can roll the balls in, and when the platform, the output ramp can roll them out. Um, from uh, once they come out of there, we go into this uh, stepper thing, which is kind of an afterthought on this bridge. Um, the bridge was designed to be able to carry a, a, a train that I have that is, we're not using um, and has these red things that can come out and when, when the bridge is open it will make the train stop and then the bridge can go up. And then I realized, wow, you know, I got this train going across here. I should make the balls go across the bridge, too. Yeah. And then I, I built this and added the black piece of, across the bridge and, and turned it into yeah. a module. Yeah, so now they can go right across the bridge, too. <laughs> and, th and this is where we started. So that's the complete, complete loop for this year. And I think uh, we got to count. I can't remember what it is now. You should go back and look at the video and count. It, it's... Somewhere in the 40s, 46 or something like that. Quite a decent number of modules. How many people helped with this this way? Uh, it was really, let's see, it was really just four of us that it, that it came up with all these modules. Um, two uh, brothers who are local, the Moody brothers, Benjamin and Jeremy, uh, myself, and then Stuart Roll, who came up from Virginia to help out. So uh, it's been pretty successful, flowing weekends um we've had some issues and stuff and people love to stand behind the camera and make faces at me and i'm trying to ignore them all so tom is very professional there's there's people trying to distract him trying to mess him up but he's just so good they can't do it can they yeah except steve got me good back in indy all right well thank you guys and yeah, uh thank you i appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about this i'm very good thank you and have a good day